So I'm going in and adding a purple to her lips to darken them up. And I really like the way the gold spray paint resists the purple. And it's the part that I sort of flipped over and stuck upside down. So it's just this sort of modely paint mess. And I really like the way it came out. Also added purple to one of her eyes just to give her different eyes because I kind of love that odd-eyed look kind of a little homage to David Bowie and I used the same paint to give her some color in her cheeks and here I'm going back in with some white to fill in her eyes sometimes I have a tendency to jump around back and forth I'm sorry if it makes it difficult to follow, it's just hard for me to think really linearly. I tend to kind of work back and forth and back and forth and I'm sure it's probably not that abnormal. So when I paint the whites of her eyes in, I'm avoiding that tear duct shape because you don't want her eyes to look like big white almond shapes. You want it to look like an eyeball shape, which is ball shaped inside of the socket. So pay attention to keeping those corners open from the white paint. really helpful if you turn the paper around so that when you're trying to do something really precise you have the tip of the brush pointing away from you it's really a lot easier to just control the line that way if you're being really really careful with that line So here I'm using the blue acrylic to give her upper lash line some definition. This part is somewhat opaque. I think if I remember correctly, I went over it again with some black just to really give it some real deep contrast in the end. but. I kind of like to build up to that, so this is a good starting point. Keep turning your page so that you can get the sharpness that you're looking for at the end of your brush. Here I'm going back in with the titanium white acrylic and adding highlights to the places that come forward on her face. They're going to end up being a little bit more opaque, but I'm not aiming at keeping the whole thing totally opaque. It's just in order to give it a three-dimensional sense, you're going to really need to add more highlights. So it's a little unavoidable that it's going to end up being more opaque in those areas. And I think the contrast is nice too. 
so the forehead is more forward so it's going to get more white keep building it up in thin layers though you don't want to just put a big old gob on you kind of need to like just keep building it up So highlights to her chin and her neck and the places that come forward. And then you're going to want to feather it out. So you could see earlier I just sort of left the color in her cheeks just kind of an imperfect mess because I knew when I went back with the acrylic that it would blend into it and be kind of an embedded layer in the color rather than color sitting on top so I wasn't worried about getting it perfect. And here I'm using the same blue acrylic to define her eyelids a little bit. Making sure to be conscious of the level of water that you have in the paint. And I'm gonna be darkening up toward the corners so that it gives it a sense of it going back and the whiter part comes forward. Really, if you mess up, you can just paint over it. So don't stress out about making mistakes. And if you look really carefully, she's not really perfectly symmetrical anyway. And I don't care or feel one bit bad about it. So I went in and added the same blue acrylic in a watered down transparent layer over her eyebrows so that you could see the gold and the colors happening underneath. And creating the other eyelid in the same way. I really like how you can just lay down a layer of this blue and just add color and just add water to spread it out. It's really just so easy to work with. So there's like a somewhat opaque line, but I can spread it out before it dries or not. And when I'm going over the lines in her face, I'm kind of trying not to cover up the original under layer entirely so that in the end you can see a thin line of what was underneath. So just going all around those lines and just slightly deepening them up with the dark blue but not completely covering in a transparent layer. So here are some more highlights in the white. Bringing her cheeks forward and mixing it in with that little layer of purple so that that becomes 
part of the white paint. I was really excited when I figured out that you could embed colors of watercolor under other colors so it just looks like color under the skin rather than laid on top like a makeup sort of look. I kind of think the most freeing thing about this whimsical style of painting faces is that it's not meant to be perfect and you're exaggerating the size of the eyes and so that the expectation is already not set up for perfection so it just sort of gives you a certain level of freedom to play and not really be worried about it. So here I am adding her hair and the background and her hair was added by tracing around it and covering the background in the blue paint in a transparent layer so that it's sort of a reverse effect where the hair is the negative space. and going around this flower shape in her hair. In this case, it's a mandala stencil, but it could be a flower. You know you're gonna want all the stencils too. Who are we kidding? But use what you've got. So let's just take a moment to notice how beautiful this blue paint is. So I'm making the layer of the blue that's closest to her more solid than the other area of the background to sort of set her apart from it a little more. And then feathering it out with water just so that you can see what's happening. It's just kind of an interesting way to bring her forward from the background more. And here I'm defining the shape of her hair. Her hair in this case, again, being the negative space, which is, well, not technically negative because it's covered in all kinds of delicious mess underneath. So here again, you can see right close to her, I'm going more opaque with the paint and then adding more water to spread it out.
And here again where you can see where the paint has so much water in it that it's not really got very much of the acrylic binder left. It really resists the gold paint underneath so it really shows through. And I had forgotten to put her ears in, so there they are. It's good to hear things. I decided to change and add her hair sort of covering up top of her ear. Sometimes you just try stuff out and decide to change it. Just roll with it. So I'm not trying to cover up all of her hair, but I am trying to define it. So I'm adding a little bit more of that blue right at the edges and then feathering it out with water just so that it brings it forward from the hair a little bit and sets it apart again. Although in this case, it's a much thinner line and much more transparent. I'm going to be going in again and just really redefining where the highlights are. The highest points are going to need the most white. And where the darkest points are need to start getting flushed out a little more. Deepening those shadows around the eyes. And adding a little bit of red in her tear ducts. 